What's up, YouTubers? So for today's episode, we are gonna be tackling a very important challenge that will help you be a better MIG welder. And honestly, you can do it with more than just MIG. It's a little harder to do a TIG, but stick and MIG, um, especially MIG, it will help you out become a much better welder. And that's simply, we are gonna disregard all settings on the machine and change things based on what we see in our weld. If you wanna be a good welder, you have to be able to do this. And by the end of this video, I think you'll understand enough of it to where you can do this yourself. And you will probably see a drastic change in the quality of your welds if you follow my advice. So with that said, let's get into it. So in front of us, we have my Humble Firepower FP200, same as the ESOB 210EM and probably pretty similar to a MIG welder you might have, at least how it functions. Now, if you have an older transformer machine where you don't have digital displays and just knobs, you can do the same thing that we're gonna do in this video. The difference is you're gonna have an easier time because those things have a, a finite stop on their settings. This does not. So you have like a range you can't go outside of this. Uh, is a little bit different because I really won't have any idea where the settings are and you'll you'll see as we get into it but a lot of people ask me and ask on message forms like well what's the ideal settings for a certain weld well honestly it really depends on your machine it depends on your skill level and how consistent you are and there is no magic number I mean there's a range of numbers that may work for you but the best thing to do Follow the chart on your machine. If you don't have one, look up like Miller Weld's calculator. They have a chart that should put you in a ballpark. But the whole point of this is so that you don't spend all day trying to dial in a setting for something simple. If you wanna go between 22 gauge or 18 gauge and quarter inch, like screwing around with the settings would take a while to figure that out and take more skill. And this eliminates a lot of the guesswork. But what we're gonna do today is completely disregard this and we're gonna set this machine completely blind. And I'll show you what I'm talking about now. So I'll have to apologize for the fan noise and the generator in the background. I'm in kind of a remote location, so I guess we'll just have to deal with it. So what I'm gonna do, and I'll show you here, this machine goes to 450 inch per minute for wire feed and who knows, 100, under 100, and then for voltage 26 to 12. Now, most of that range you'll never be welding in. You'll be welding closer to the middle of that range or maybe a little bit towards the higher. So the, the lower is kind of useless. But what I wanna do, and let me grab it here, is I'm gonna tape over this to where I can't even see these numbers. I'll have no idea where this machine is set at. And then I'm gonna spin the knobs each way a bunch of times to where I clearly have no freaking idea where the settings are. And just in case you think I can see through that, I'll put an extra layer on it. And now, I'm going to spin them. I have no idea what this machine is set for, none whatsoever. Which is good because we're going to make a weld, look at it, we're going to determine what's wrong with it, and then we're going to adjust the setting that I think needs to be adjusted. So let's go over to the welding table and start. You can take a sip of this coffee here. Today's unofficial sponsor is Quick Trip Coffee. I like it. Their food is trash though. And they just started selling gas station shrimp. So you can imagine, you know, gas station food in, in general is pretty bad, but shrimp at a gas station, that's pretty crazy. <laughs> Anyways, got my plate set up. Let me take a sip and then let's uh, make a weld. So just like you have no idea what my settings are, I have no idea what they are. So I will cheat a little bit. 
I'm just going to pull a trigger. That wire feed looks fairly fast for this uh, thickness of material, so I have a feeling we're going to deposit a little bit too big of a weld, but I guess we'll find out, won't we? So to start things off, let's just look at that. See how humped up that is? That's not good, that's not what we want. It sounded decent, and there's not a whole lot of spatter, so for this first go round, we got lucky, or at least I did. We don't have too much to adjust to go beyond where we're at to improve it. So based on what I'm seeing here, we need to ask ourselves, is this weld an appropriate size for this material? I would say that the amount of metal is close to accurate, maybe a little bit too much, but close. The next question is, is it wetted out to the plate properly? Meaning, is it humped up like caulk, or is it wetted out and flatter? Well, again, if we look at that, I would say it's humped up like caulk. So I'm going to rotate the voltage dial a little bit and make another weld and we'll look at it. So I did not change the wire feed at all. I only changed the voltage. Look at how nicely wetted out that is in comparison to the first one. I did slow my travel speed down a little bit. Had I slowed my travel speed down on that first weld, it would have just humped up higher and higher and higher. With the higher voltage where it's spreading the weld out wider, I can actually slow my travel speed down to produce a decent weld without putting excessive reinforcement. Now, the question we need to ask ourselves, again, is that bead properly wetted out? By the look of it, it's still a little bit humped up. I would like it a little bit flatter. The next question is, is that amount of metal appropriate for this thickness of material? And I would say on a fillet weld or a lap weld, probably. It might be a little bit on the high side, so a little too much metal, but I think what we need to do is increase our voltage another pinch to get it to go flatter. So looking at this, see how it's wider yet than the previous two? It's flatter if you look at the profile. It might be a little bit hard for you guys to see, but it's a little bit flatter. This, I would say, is in the ballpark of what we would want for this material. Now keep in mind, we're just running beads on plate. If I was doing an outside corner joint, this would probably be a little bit too much metal. On a fillet weld, it might not have enough voltage, but for a bead on plate, that's very acceptable. So we went from trash, kind of okay, to looking pretty decent. Just from a few settings changes, that I made well blind. I had no idea what I adjusted. So let's go over, look at what the machine says when I peel off the tape and let's compare it to the chart inside. So let's see what this says. If I can get this tape off. So we're at 16.1 and 195. Let's look at what the chart says. So where we're at is for eighth inch, this is the number that we should be paying attention to. I'll get it to focus, there we go. So this says that 190 for wire feed and 18 volts, if we're using C25 gas and 035 wire, is what we should be aiming for. Now. If you recall, we were at 195, so I nailed the wire feed pretty much at what works, and this chart is correct. Now, we are a little bit lower on voltage. We're at 16.1 versus 18. 
Now, two volts isn't going to make a huge difference on a flat weld where we're not actually welding something. If I were to weld a fillet weld where I'm actually melting two pieces of metal together, what we're at at 16.1 is going to be flat out too cold. There's no question about it. So what I'll do now is I'll bump up the voltage to 18 like they're recommending and we'll do another weld and compare it. So some crap fell out of the nozzle there and botched that there, but I upped the voltage from 16.1 to 18 and look at how much massively wider that weld is. And then not only that, I don't burn myself here. Ooh, that's hot, 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 hot. You can see how much flatter it is. Look at the profiles. So the voltage is more appropriately correct, I would say yes, at 18 volts. This I wouldn't call humped up for a beat on plate for practice, it's fine. And we also had the added benefit of the preheat of the plate from these passes, which did help that wet out better. So had this plate been ice cold, that 16.1 would have been an issue. But again, I'm setting it based on what I'm seeing. This weld for a beat on plate for eighth inch material is acceptable looking. This bead, I would say borderline is too hot for this material, but again, this plate is preheated and we're only running a bead on plate. We are not actually welding two things together. So this, I would say yes, absolutely, their settings are appropriate for eighth inch if you're welding cold plates together like in a fillet weld. But both of these are acceptable. And I set all the way up to number three completely blind and got it in the ballpark. So the settings that you're using are of little concern. Set your machine based on what you're seeing, not some magic number. Magic numbers don't exist. Every machine is accurate plus or minus 20%, and it's it, imperative that you spend the time to get to know how your machine operates and set it based on what you're seeing. So let's do a whole nother run on a cold plate. Same thing, we'll do it all over again and see what happens. So again, I'm gonna cheat a little bit and just see how fast this comes out of the gun. I can tell you that that wire feed is gonna be far too high. If that was 023, 24 wire, we'd probably be in okay shape, but it's really hammering the wire out. Now obviously I have no idea about the voltage. So let's make a test weld and see what happens. All right, <laughs> worst one yet. Let's just look at this. So <laughs> I knew we had major problems when I pulled the trigger and the gun lifted up off the plate. It was feeding so much wire that wasn't melting off. It was just stubbing, hitting the, the basically the bottom of the plate that wasn't melted and then pushing the gun off. So clearly look at the amount of metal that we deposited. Looks like a, a drumstick chicken drumstick but way too much metal given my travel speed for this thin of material and nowhere near the voltage because it was pushing the gun off so we need a drastic drop in wire feed so that's what we'll start out with we'll drop the wire feed a bunch so I dropped the wire speed I don't know four rotations of the dial I have no idea how much that is let's see what happens Well, it didn't stub out against my gun, so that's an improvement. Way, way, way too much metal for our voltage. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna drop the wire feed even more, and then we'll go from there. One of the things you guys got to get in the habit of, besides cleaning your dirty tip, is you got to 
how do I put it? You gotta play around with settings. Like you can't be afraid of too much voltage, too little, too much wire feed. Like you need to develop with your welder a sweet spot with it. You know, the welder only does what you tell it to. And if you don't tell it to do things or you don't make, you know, minute changes and see how they react and then make another change based on that, you know, the welder's not gonna do it for you. Even with those auto sets, those help a lot because you basically are adjusting what the machine tells you the results are, not actual numbers. But you don't need auto set to do this. We're, we're basically doing auto set ourselves right now. So I drop the wire feed some more. Let's see what happens. So we are showing progress. Less and less metal. I am traveling a little bit faster. We still have too much metal down, I would say, for this. So I'm going to drop the wire feed more yet. So I dropped the wire feed a little bit more. Let's do a test. It's still having an issue at the start of the weld. However, if we look at, that's starting to look like a roped up bead of caulk that's fairly consistently a bead of caulk. Now, I would say our weld metal is appropriate or at least close to the amount of metal we need for this plate. So I think we need to increase voltage now to get that to wet out. So I'm gonna increase the voltage by like, I don't know, a whole revolution. Maybe, actually, you know what, I'll do three revolutions because I think we're quite a bit off from voltage. Another tip for you guys, part of the reason why I'm gonna be able to dial this in successfully, blindly, is that my travel speed, I know how fast to travel to make a decent weld. I know that if I have to go super slow and it's just humping up, that my settings are off. I know if I have to fly like a bat out of hell to weld, I know that I'm on the hot side, but I have very consistent travel speed. So how far, how fast I move with my nozzle, with my gun, same thing, TIG and stick. That's something that you need to develop over time. You don't just, you know, your first night of welding, you're not consistent. That's why your welds look like trash. No offense to anyone, mine did too when I learned. It's because I was so inconsistent. I mean, I would travel this fast and slow this fast, or just too fast, too, you, you get the idea. You have to develop consistency. You need to run the same speed the whole length because that's a variable that you can easily control. If you tell yourself, look, I need to run this gun, move it exactly the correct speed, and maybe not the correct speed, but exactly the same speed, you can change settings and get things to work. If you have inconsistent travel speed where you're all over the map, that's a third variable. You got voltage, you have wire feed, you have travel speed, three variables. The more variables you're trying to screw around with at once, the worse off your welds are. You need to eliminate as many variables as possible to where it leaves only one that needs to be adjusted. Because you're, you're gonna end up chasing your, your numbers around. You know, I used to teach uh, how to shoot like precision pistol shooting and people, I, I stress so much to them, like focus on just being consistent. You're not focused on the bullseye. You're focusing on eliminating as many variables and just getting consistent groupings. Same thing here. Knock out as many variables. With TIG, when you learn TIG, you wanna eliminate the foot pedal. So you just go full pedal, and now that's a variable amperage variable you're not worried about. This, get your focus on that consistent travel speed. Dial it in, and then you only have two variables to screw with. All right, so I believe I made a change on the voltage. Let's make a pass. So 
So that's looking far better already. It's still a little kind of weird humped up at the start. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna increase the voltage a little bit more. So my camera died there, I apologize. So if we look here at this, see how much wider that is? It's flatter as well with that increase in voltage. Now keep in mind, this plate is preheated from these by the time I got here. So if we we're welding on a cold plate or welding two pieces of metal together, it might not be as flat as this. And to prove that point, let me run a bead on a cold plate and compare it to this preheated plate. Hopefully I don't burn myself here. If you look at that, it might be a little bit hard to see. Same settings, see how much more this weld that I just did is humped up than that last one? You can see it from that side profile, hopefully. And that's a really good example that this being a cold plate with no preheat, it looks like our voltage is higher on here than it really is. The reason is, is that the preheat of the plate helps it to wet out and we need less voltage. This one on a cold plate could use more voltage. So what I'm going to do is bump the voltage up even more, make another weld far away from that where it's not hot, and then we're going to look at it. Notice how long it's staying red. We're definitely on the hot side for this material for just a bead on plate, unquestionably hot. Now if we look, so with a bump of voltage, see how those are starting to look similar as far as how much they're wetted out? We even nip the corner off there or the edge. So more voltage on this equals flatter weld because the plate's cold. This is probably appropriate for an eighth inch fillet weld. Our bead size is a little bit on the big side to be completely honest. So based on what I'm seeing here, I think our voltage is gonna be somewhere close to 18 volts and our wire feed is probably gonna be a little bit higher than 190 because the weld looks a little bit big. But again, that could just be travel speed that's dictating that. So let's go to the welder, peel off and see where our settings are. So the moment of truth, I hope this doesn't end up screwing up my display. I don't think it will. Well, there we have it. So our settings are a volt over what it recommends for eighth. So they recommend 18, I believe I'm looking at the chart now, 18 and 190. Our wire feed is a lot higher than where we should be. Now, that's gonna really pose an in interesting point I'm gonna make, or at least contribute to it is what I mean. I was able to successfully weld eighth inch material with wire feed that is literally 50% higher because this machine is recommending 190. So over 50% higher wire feed and I made an acceptable looking weld. The reason I was able to is because I recognized how much metal was going down on the plate and I increased my travel speed to compensate for it. Had I went the same speed as the lower values we just ran when I pulled this off and we're at like 195, basically with that wire feed, I would have been producing a weld that's three times as high and it, it would have been no good. So as your skill increases, the settings you can actually make welds with are gonna be massively uh, plus or minus what a machine might tell you. And that also kind of reinforces my point that it's the person doing the welding, not the machine. 
Like, it, as stupid as it sounds, like, yeah, we got variables we can adjust, but it's you yourself, the variable that I can't control and the machine can't control, that has the biggest influence on the outcome of what you're doing. Now, I told you that the weld that we deposited was big and that the wire feed was gonna be higher than 190. I'll be completely honest with you, I had no idea it was gonna be that much higher than 190. I would have thought maybe 250, 230, somewhere in there. And it really goes to show how much when you have some kind of skill and practice that it makes a difference in what you're able to do. So now let me drop that down closer. Since our voltage is a little bit higher, I'm gonna drop it down to like 205. And now let's go make a uh, last weld here. So now we're running a known setting of 19 volts, which is a little bit on the high side, but that's okay for a bead on plate. And we're running 205, so 95 inches per minute of wire speed less. And I'm gonna clean a nozzle out here since this thing is filthy. So let's make a weld. You notice it's still red hot for long. Our voltage is realistically on the high side for a bead on plate. And we can tell that because it's really nipping the end of that weld off and we don't want that. But for bead on plate, it's all right. Now let's take a look at this. You can see this weld isn't really that much different than this weld despite this weld being run at 50% more wire feed. Now I can tell you 100% that when I was welding on this guy, I was moving forward slower than this. So my travel speed was able to accommodate welding this versus this and get similar results. Pretty interesting. So let's go to conclusion. So what did we learn today, guys and girls? Well, <laughs> we learned that Settings can be far, far off, and depending on your skill of recognizing what's going on, you can compensate for it. Wire feed speed is one of those things you can compensate a ton for just by controlling your travel speed. Unfortunately, voltage, if it's too low or too high realistically for what your wire feed is, that you really can't compensate for. Because say your voltage is too low, right? and you just, oh, I'll just slow down. Well, then your weld just starts humping up and building up off the plate. Like, you can't like just keep pouring metal in there that's cold and get it to wet out. So your voltage is actually far more critical than your wire feed. And we saw a 50% more wire feed on these two, and the end result is actually pretty similar. So, you know, it goes without saying, you yourself are the best variable to get under control, which is why it's very important that you practice enough to be consistent so you can say to yourself, this isn't working, like all of these, these aren't working. It's the setting of voltage or the wire feed and not you. When you're a variable in, in the equation of why things aren't working, you're, you know, is it you or is it the machine settings? You don't know. So eliminate you yourself from the variables. And you can see, even though I welded blind, you and I had no idea what these settings were. I was able to adjust this and get acceptable results, acceptable welds with having no clue about what the settings were. And that was the whole point of this video is I wanted to teach you guys that how important it is to base your settings off of what you're seeing, not off of what I tell you to, not what, uh, what your chart says. That's a guide to get you in the ballpark. You need to base what you should do off of what you see. And I was successfully able to do it blind. You may have a lot harder time than I do, or I did, and it comes down to practice and experience. So you really need to do this exercise yourself and it will make you a tremendously better MIG welder because you need to understand what your voltage adjustment does and what your wire feed does. And just to kind of recap that, and you can see with this, 
you know, too little voltage means that it humps up on the plate like caulk. So if you're seeing indications of that, keep your wire feed where it is, increase the voltage. If it's too flat, like flatter than this, and you're not depositing much metal, your voltage is probably too high. Back it off a little bit or increase your wire feed to match that. And you saw on this one that the wire feed was far too high because it was hitting and you could hear it in a video, it was stubbing where it would hit it and push the gun off. So too high a wire feed, it's not gonna be able to melt that depending on what your voltage is at. So again, all of this is stuff to think of. I know this is a complicated and complex subject and I don't expect you guys to understand or be uh, you know, a magician with this overnight. This takes a lot of time to develop. And most of my understanding understanding of this comes from MIG and, or excuse me, stick and TIG, not MIG welding. So because I was good at those other two, I really understood a lot of what's going on. So I can reference that into MIG welding. So it all carries over, not all of it, but I guess a lot of it. So with that said, hopefully you learned something. Hopefully your welds will be better now that you understand what you're doing. And I really hope that you guys do this challenge and do it a couple times. And you're gonna find that you're able to dial it in without having a clue as to where things are. And that's important because you'll be a better welder because of it. So thanks for sticking around for the video. Until next time.